Hi everybody, my name is Marta Mama. I'm your basic queer bitch and since I'm from Spain but I grew up in the US, I think I have kind of a unique perspective on Drag Race España, so let me explain you all the references. Explota, explota, me explota, explota mi corazón. I'm very sorry you didn't get a video for last week's episode. That was because, well, I lost my voice and it ended up being COVID. And that's always quite difficult, but when you're like a single mom and you have no family nearby, it gets like extra hard. So yeah, I'm sorry. But so today I'm gonna do like a brief recap of last week. And then we're gonna talk about this week's episode, if that's okay. So since I've been sick, I've been really, really, really struggling. So if you want to support my channel or myself, I'm going to leave my PayPal account down below. I know there's a lot of people that really want to support me. If you feel compelled to, you have my information down below. Thank you. So last week's episode was not my favorite, but it had some cool things. The mini challenge they had, they had to wear these like inflatable costumes to look to look like I don't know like sumo wrestlers I guess and they did this sumo fighting mini challenge and I love the way they edited it because it looked very much like a video game like Street Fighter or something of course Estrella won and then we have the maxi challenge so because Estrella has won she can choose the teams they're going to work in pairs so she chooses to work with Sharon again they have already worked together like a bunch of times but you know they both live in Barcelona they're both probably the front runners and if you're going to do something that it has to do with acting I think Sharon is the person you want to be with not only because you have more chances of winning but also because you have more chances of learning something isn't this supposed to be this transformative experience where you get to improve yourself well of course you're gonna work with the best one and the other girls weren't that happy about it because all of them want to work with Estrella all of them want to work with Sharon but they keep like working together but well I think the pairings were cool were fair and made sense so in this maxi challenge, they had to convince people to go to certain uh, like destinations in Spain. And I am almost convinced that they were really talking about three specific gay destinations in Spain, but they didn't end up saying the name of the place. In my opinion, it was pretty obvious that they were doing Torremolinos, Sieges and Mas Palomas, which are the, like the biggest gay tourist destinations that we have in Spain and the results were very 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 cringy for me personally but it is true that if you go to one of those destinations probably what you're looking for is to meet new friends and be very friendly with them and to consume like funny substances so that's what they ended up making these places to be. I can get over, it's kind of cringy, but the like hyper sexualization and you know, everything's like sex, sex, sex. I can get over that. I'm okay, it's fine. I'm an adult, I understand. But I was very surprised with the substance promotion. I was not expecting that. That is, you know, a bit weird for me. I don't even like it when they do it about alcohol and being drunk. It's like, uh, I know when you go to those places, that's the thing that people do. But you could also portray how you would like it to be. If you're not even saying what place it is, well... <laughs> and they also had like product placement, like advertisement for boyofres, which are waffles that are shaped in the form of a penis. And so they had to incorporate this waffle with the shape of a penis in all their things so that contributed to you know it was all about sex 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 and i have no problem when it's all about sex like not at all i love sex and i love like funny jokes but uh i think it wasn't funny and it wasn't presented like in an interesting way it was just that I, I guess this is a difficult challenge, but I was very, very, very underwhelmed. 
Marina and Estrella have a little conversation in the workroom about Marina's mom. And I love that they included this because we haven't really been able to see a lot of Marina's personality. I, I have this impression, maybe it's only me, but the Marina in the confessionals looks like a complete different person of that Marina in the workroom. Like when it, she is in the confessionals, she's all like with her beret and she looks like, hmm, like if she thinks she's better than all of them. But then when you see her in the workroom, she's having fun with everyone, she's smiling. And so I love that we get to see her a little more because I don't understand the edit they're giving Marina. I understand Marina as like a, a performative activist more than a drag queen even. I think she's a punk artist. And I and she they are giving her this edit like um, this intellectual uh, diva and I'm above all of you. And like, that's not Marina. The runway was Rafaela Carrà. Rafaela Carrà was an Italian singer that was very popular in Spain too and in South America and many other places. But uh, she spoke Spanish and she had even she had a TV show even in Spain uh, or several. Um, so we loved her very much, and she very sadly passed away last year. So this was like an homage. I think they did the same thing in Drag Race Italy, but to be honest, Drag Race Italy is the only franchise I haven't watched. It was very good that they put the references images in the same, in the edit, so you can see them too, but well, here you have them. Um, Estrella comes out with an umbrella with a hole in it, and her outfit was very Rafaela, but she took it like to more campy plays, which I love. Benedita's look was great. She looked just like Rafaela and she even uh, like dyed her beard to be blonde and to match her hair, which was very cool. Sharon's look was based in this one. And if you take like a closer look to it, it doesn't really like, the problem is the fabric, but her energy was great and it's Sharon, like, come on. Sethla's look was actually more similar to her reference that what people think. Um, but it is true that she tried to do a Sethless makeup. The thing is that sometimes the girls are going to try to replicate exactly what that artist was doing. Sometimes the girls are going to try to bring that person and that style to their drag and they don't usually say do you remember like last year's veneno runway some of them tried to look like veneno some of them like did like something completely different so yeah as usual we don't really know what we're judging but it is true that if you're going to do a setless look with things from Rafaela Carrà maybe integrating those better I don't know for me, it was okay. Yuri Kli was amazing. She comes out in this dress. She looks beautiful. She looks gorgeous. And she's walking all funny. And then she, she pulls out a big telephone from her pussy. Because in her TV show, Rafaela Carra had a TV show that was called Ciao, Rafaela. Hello, Rafaela. And she would like talk to people on the phone. So the phone was something very representative of her. So yeah, that was that was super cool. She was so funny. It wasn't expected and it was so simple. Like Juriti keeps gagging us with things that are like quite simple, but just funny and cute and good ideas. Marina's runway was amazing as well because she looked exactly like Rafaela. And there's this thing about Marina. Girl, Marina gets Rafaela's movement down to a T. She has her energy. She can do Rafaela amazing. And actually that's what happened. Cetla and Marina ended up being in the bottom because they were judging like each pair. The top were Estrella and Sharon and the bottom were Marina and um, Cetlas. And this lip sync was so cool. They both did such an amazing job. But Marina was doing like the exact choreo from the song. I think this was so impressive. I just, 
I was blown away with Marina's lip sync. I love Marina, I love Seth Less. I was very sad to see her go. And it really broke my heart. Like everyone started crying. She started crying. Like she was trying to hold in her tears. And I was like, <laughs> The worst part of this episode, in my opinion, were not only like the cringy little challenges that they did, uh, it was especially when they asked them who should go home and why. And I understand that they have to do that because that's something that they do in, in the US, but then in the Untucked, they have this conversation because when you're asked a question like that, you're not, you don't have to say like specifically, if you're choosing who did it worse that week or who is like less versatile or you know you can do whatever and that's the problem that we always have with the all-stars that each girl has like a way of thinking who should go home well um i think the producers behind the cameras were kind of like feeling that it was a little bit too much kumbaya and that we need drama and honestly, I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't like uh, that this happened. I understand like each person, what they were feeling. Like they were saying Judigi because she was less versatile, but like she did better this challenge maybe. Her look was better. It, it's kind of difficult. I, I would probably many times like act like Judigi did where I'm trying to just make it a little bit lighter uh, but doing so I'm doing the opposite that's something that happens to me very often so I understand her I my heart broke with Estrella because she was the girl that paired the girls up she was feeling some type of way she loves them all and I guess that she was feeling like I have to put them in this situation and now we all have to talk about the worst things about the other girls and I think that of course you want drama because you want to feel something when you watch them. You want to feel like you understand them, you want to pick your favorites, you want but drama is not the thing that makes you keep watching. Drama is one type of real human emotion. And I think that you don't need drama if you have real human emotions. And I feel that probably the production team was pushing for a little drama, thinking that maybe the season was going to be received as something bland because they all loved each other. But it's only bland when they all love each other superficially, when they all love each other, but not really. But when they all really love each other and admire each other and they have like normal problems because they're living together, they didn't know each other before, like why do you have to create drama that wasn't there? Uh, I'm sure that little segment in the Ectuct was absolutely completely butchered in the editing and that we are seeing a version that makes no sense really. I really love that Benedita and Sharon really just stayed quiet that's the smartest thing to do girl <laughs> like yeah so let's go with this week's episode um let's start with the mini challenge they're doing the puppet challenge and let's see let me think benedita was doing marina she was kind of doing a good job with her voice but her energy was still very benedita but then she did like the helicopter attack that she did in the sumo challenge last week and it got a lot better then we have the master sharon playing estrella she had her voice down to a t this was so impressive this is so difficult to do they have completely different accents for like different corners in spain i was uh, freaking out laughing when i heard her she has such a talent doing like impersonations and now we know it's not only transforming herself into a character but she does have like that ear for the accents and the nuances of each specific person Sharon is just out of this world Marina got to do Jurigi and it wasn't funny and yeah Jurigi did Venedita and I loved that one I really loved that one because she wasn't being that funny, but
but the little doll looked very cute and she starts like singing like Venedita was trying to sing in the musical. So she starts like, if I... <laughs> And it's not only that Chiron did a very good job doing Estrella, but also Estrella had Chiron's puppet and Estrella did a terrible job. She still had her Andalusian accent. She still talked like Estrella and she was portraying Chiron as a person that isn't Chiron really, is like Estrella's frustrations projected into a puppet. Like Estrella, like Estrella is just saying Sharon is winning in everything. That's her whole point. Her whole point is that Sharon is winning in everything. She didn't use her voice. She didn't do nothing of that. But, you know, I still love her. And then we get to know that this week's maxi challenge is the roast, which is kind of interesting since we had the puppet challenge, which is kind of a roast as well. But cool. I approve. And we get to know that the people they're going to be roasting are the top five of last year's season. So we have Dobby Manurmi, Puppy Poison, uh, Sagittaria, Killer Queen, and Carmen Farala. So the girls come into the workroom and they all get like paired up. They give them some advice. And then we have like a super cute conversation between Yurigi and Benedita that we've got to... We've we're getting to see that Yuri and Benedita have like a special connection. Like their type of drag is quite similar in a way. And I love to see the chemistry between them. And Yuri is talking about her grandma who had to leave Spain uh, during our dictatorship. Yuri was born in Madrid, but then like when she was like four years old, she moved to Belgium too. So she's telling all this story about her grandma that very sadly passed away from COVID. The same exact day that she had to cancel this dinner that they were preparing because she had to go to work. So she didn't get the chance to spend the last moment with uh, her grandma. And I think it was like very, very cute because it linked very well with the runway afterwards. So I love that they put it, but don't you like start when you see this, aren't you like, oh girl, you're in trouble? Like they're editing in a way where in the workroom you have one teary conversation per challenge and it's usually the person that goes home. Well, last week was Marina and she didn't go home, but she was in the bottom. She could have. They're giving it away. Then we have the roast. So let's go over them one by one. Marina was playing like an Argentinian character, which is supposed to be Marina's cousin. And she is El Ada Marina. Ada Madrina with a D means the fairy godmother. But she changed Madrina to Marina because that's her name. So she's playing this Argentinian character and Marina's doing a great job. A great job. I didn't think that she was going to be funny. I think that once she has enough time to structure things, she's like so, so, so good. And she was being like reckless with them. And then she like turns around and reveals into her true, her true like Marina self. And uh, she's even meaner then because I think her best joke was her last joke when she says, oh, and you also asked for a wish. Like all the girls from season one, uh, when you saw the talent in season two, you wished to have a job again someday. Like that was the best because it was like so true. Sharon chose to go second. She got to decide the order of the rose since she won the mini challenge. So second place is a very good place. That's what Carmen Farala told her to do. So yeah, good idea. Sharon's roast was very, very, very good. The only thing is that we expected it to be that way. And for me, it started like a lot slower, but it started getting better and better and better and better. And that's the best thing. You don't want a roast where you have like funny jokes and funny jokes, funny jokes, not funny jokes. You know, you want to go like this. So people are going to remember the last joke. The last joke has to be the funniest. And for her, I think it was saying all these orange things about Carmen. And she did it like with such a good timing that it was just hilarious. And she looked 
so sexy. She has this way of looking age appropriately sexy, which is such a difficult thing to do because most girls, when they try to be sexy, they try to look younger. And I'm sorry, but you can be sexy at, for sexy at 40, at 45, at 50, at 75. You can also be sexy and look your age. So I love that for her. In the third position, we have Estrella Estravaganza, the love of my life. You know, she's my favorite. I love her. But I really thought she was going to be in the bottom this week. I think that Estrella is not a comedy queen. Estrella is a campy queen that has a very big personality. So when you get to know her and also being a big queen, like people, a big queen with a great personality. Uh, oh, sure, you're a comedy queen. I think she does very good improv and that she is a very funny person, but she's funny in a very like Andalusian way. I love Estrella, but she was having a hard time. Her tempo was weird. Uh, comedy is a very difficult thing and it's a skill that you have to practice. You have to understand where the punchlines go, you know, the setup, like it is a specific thing. And I think like she was having a little bit of trouble. Benedita uh, was having some problems in the beginning, I think. She wasn't as like confident, but probably Benedita has never like spoken to a mic during a show or maybe just to like present the next girl or something like that. But I don't think that she is a mic girl. Like she, what she said, like I just take off, take off my panties and I leave. That is my drag. I actually think she did a better job than Estrella when I saw it, but well. She started very nervous. She had her notes. She found out, she found an excuse to have the notes with her, but she still had the notes with her. And she was doing this like, it was almost like a reading more than a roast. It's kind of difficult to understand the difference between a reading and a roast in Spain because a roast is something that doesn't exist here. Most people just know what a roast is because they've watched Drag Race. So if you try to explain it briefly, a uh, reading and a roast is basically the same thing, uh, but it's not in the US, you know what I mean? So uh, yeah, I didn't feel her composition, her jokes, she was just doing like shady remarks. And then Yuri Yi, you could really tell that Yuri Yi was a little bit nervous, but I think she got like very good singers in there. Like she was, but it was the same thing as Benedita. She was uh, reading basically. Like she was doing this thing where you were saying something good about someone, but it's not good at all. Uh, it's very shady, but that's like the way you read people as well. Uh, I think she didn't have the tempo of a roast correctly, but yeah, she impressed me very much. I wasn't expecting her to be that funny. I know she was a shady bitch, but she was pretty funny as well. But you can see that she wasn't confident. Speaking in Spanish, sometimes it's weird for her. She has said it before because she speaks many languages. So speaking in Spanish, sometimes like your brain, it happens to me all the time. Doesn't matter what language you speak, I'm always like. What? Then we have the runway. The category this week is heroinas de España. Like women that you admire and that you consider that are heroines. First down the runway, we have Yuri del Cli. She had this outfit made completely out of like crocheted things and a lot of these were from her grandma when she passed away, which was very special because you just heard a conversation about her grandma a little bit ago. And this was so amazing. When she reveals her face, you can see that she has, like she's been shot in her head. She's representing Las Trece Rosas, the 13 Roses. That was a group of 13 women and girls that were executed in our dictatorship after the war, when we were already in peace. They took this group of girls that were accused of many things. But, you know, sometimes it was just because uh, your boyfriend fought in the war or things like that. So they were executed because for treason, basically. 
and uh, the 13 roses have always been like come on like when we saw this we were all crying i have goosebumps now just only remembering this feeling the way i explain it this is how i explained it to letris and manila um if you remember simone's look uh, that she did this white beautiful gorgeous look with her hands up and then she turned around and it said say their names do you remember that feeling oh my god i want to cry that is what we felt when we saw this uh this is something very very special and literally like um she looked gorgeous this is very difficult to do with all these different patterns she made it work the thing on her face even looks like so fashion but so vintage at the same time but the most impressive thing is that this is something that belongs to like our history and she chose to use all these crochets from her grandma and her grandma had the spatial relationship with the dictatorship where they had to like run away from Spain and she was a woman in those times like this is something very very powerful of course it did happen 80 years ago but it is still like a huge symbol of resistance in our country so this was just like Marina's look was very very cool too she also explained it like it actually looks like this picture of Tilda Swinton and she tried to explain like she has a non-binary figure uh, her silhouette is on, purp on purpose is very non-binary she is uh, with her chest out and the silhouette on the pants they're like very open very non-binary uh, and then she has these huge very long hands that are covering up to her head and she has a heart on like a headpiece and she has like a lot of the trans colors the trans symbols and especially in her pants she has so many names and I'm 100% sure that those names all of them are names of real people so in the creation of this look, she had to research hundreds and hundreds of trans and trans feminine people in Spain. And I'm completely sure that, I don't know, like La Veneno's name is there. When she talks about it, she, she says that being non-binary, she many times doesn't feel included in the T. It's like, if I don't have surgeries, you're not including me here. I understand completely this feeling and I thought the way that she had to express it, even if it was more conceptual, it worked so, so, so well. And the thing that I love, 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 love about Drag Race España is that if in Drag Race in the US, there is a look that you don't understand right away, the judges will tell you that. Like, I do not understand your look. I have to understand it from the first moment that you come in, down this runway. In Spain, if you don't understand the look, you ask the queen, what do you want to represent with this look? And the queen explains it in her own terms. Thank you very fucking much. Because honestly, where are you going to see the looks? You're going to see looks from the drag queens in a show in person where you have a context or you're going to see those looks in social media where you have a description where the queens explain their looks it makes no sense not being able to explain your own look or that someone holds you accountable because they don't understand your look well maybe you should read a book or two i don't know in dragula i love dragula that's my favorite drag show actually in dragula they explain the looks if they are not easily understood and it's like Thank you. Like, why do I have to make my look for the most stupid person that is watching? Then we have Estrella Estravaganza's look. She's paying homage to a lot of like journalists, like ladies that were journalists in Spain uh, because she studied journalism. And she says that after being in university for four or five years or whatever, there are a lot of women journalists that she had never heard about even in university. So she feel she felt kind of robbed, I guess, like I should know about these people. So she's doing justice right and she's paying homage to all these journalists. She chose to do this black and white look, uh, which is something similar to what 
detox did in the finale of season five but every time someone tries to do this black and white thing where you know you're trying to make it look like you're coming out of a black and white movie they're never going to be as successful as detox but <laughs> it did make sense because she was wearing like newspapers everywhere. So it's not only that she wanted to look black and white as in a movie, she wanted to look black and white as in the newspaper. The new the fabric that she had, the newspaper fabric, I'm absolutely sure that this that was like a custom printed fabric with the actual faces of those journalists, completely sure. And she was using like a little mic. I think that mic was the one that Marina had like, last episode doing Rafaela Carra. So Sharon was paying homage to her mom and to a lot of like stay at home moms. And I liked it, but for me, it was lacking a little bit of something personal. I think she wasn't talking. I would have loved it. She would have represented her mom. She was representing like a, an American mom. Like her mom, I'm sure didn't look like this. She was always perfect. And I love all the little surprises under her skirt and everything. But sometimes I want to hear Sharon's personal voice more through her drag, like who she is a little bit more. I understand that she cannot do anything wrong, but I love her drag so much that I would love, love, love for it to be a little more personal and vulnerable and to say something about yourself and the world. And I think this was just kind of a off-brand generic stay-at-home mom, you know? But of course it's Sharon, she cannot do anything wrong. Benedita was paying homage to all the women painters that we don't really pay much attention to. There are so many amazing women painters in Spain that aren't as popular as the guys for many, many different reasons. But I love that she's taking it to artistry. I love that she is not like she understands that. OK, understanding volumes isn't only understanding proportions and having a tiny waist and big hips. It is also understanding like volume of things. And when you have so much fabric, it's very easy for you to look like a blob. But she, I think she did it in a very correct way. She knows where that dress has to end, what type of shoe, like Benedita's shoes are always on point. And the best thing was her peineta um, that, you know, we've seen a lot of peinetas. But she had like a very avant-garde peineta. Uh, the forms that are inside of La Peineta are actually like paintbrushes. And she has like other like tool flowers that match with La Peineta. Very, very good job because yes, the obvious thing is wearing like a beret, but that is like the French painter, let's say. So I think this was a very, very successful look for Benedita. So the top this week is Marina. I'm very happy for her. It was about time. I love Marina since episode one, since she did the Ocaña thing. And it's the type of artist that I'm always very attracted to. So I'm very happy for her. Sharon also did an amazing job, but Sharon doesn't need another win, you know? And in the bottom two, we have Judy Gidetli and Benedita. This was giving me like Raja and Carmen vibes, you know, that lip sync, that sexy, sexy lip sync, that one. The song was Fuego by Eleni Fureira. That is a Eurovision song from um, Cyprus, actually, in 2018. But it, it didn't even win Eurovision, but it became like a very big hit. And I think that even though this was filmed like back in November, they tried to make it fit like exactly the week where Eurovision was going to be. And in last week's episode, the judge, like the guest judge was Ruth Lorenzo, which was also a Eurovision singer. So yeah, very could very cool detail from the production. I saw it. Yeah, I gotcha. This lip sync was amazing. They both love each other very much. And it was such a hot lip sync. I loved it. I thought both of them did a very good job. Judici revealed to like red hair. 
like fuego fire and Benedita just talk off, took off her clothes and she was wearing her pasties and her lingerie and she was being all sexy and I was like, oh my God, oh my God. But you know, at this point it is so, so difficult to send anyone home, but well, it was Yuriji's time to go home. The fifth place is always like somewhat very epic, don't they say that? So I'm very sad for her. I saw her I saw her going all the way, to be honest. I think she's one of the most beautiful creatures on earth. And the way that she exited the workroom, like singing opera all by herself, like with the dim lights and everything. Again, my goosebumps! Like Judigi has a way of expressing beauty, not only physical beauty, but just beauty. She understands beauty in general when she sings. She has such a like, great sensitivity for beauty that she is always able to make me very emotional. So I'm very sad she left, but girl, that exit was epic. That was like the best girl that has ever left any workroom. I loved it, so congrats. So this week's episode was a good one. In my opinion, it was like the best one after the talent show. I loved it. I think it was very good. I'm very, like, I'm tripping. Like we only have four girls left. I don't know. I don't know how this happened. Like suddenly there's only four, but well, of course I'm gonna leave a lot of information down below, a lot of links, check that out. You'll have the link to listen to The Chop with Latrice and Manila, where I'm the official The Chop correspondent. And I wanna say especially, especially thank you to everyone who has sent me PayPal's and who are like supporting me all the time, it really means a lot. Like I'm gonna get emotional. It really, really means a lot. So that's all for today. I see you next, I'll see you next week, I hope. Thank you very much for watching. Stay queer, love you.